This is the DJI Neo. It's a sub 250 gram drone that comes in at $249 and it doesn't even require a controller to use. Let's get this thing out of the box and take a closer look. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video with Coastal Drone Co. My name's Ian and what we've got right here is a pretty important in the world of drones. This is the DJI Neo and it's the latest sub 250 gram drone. It comes packed with AI features, it's the size of your palm and has a compatibility with the DJI FPV systems, but we're going to get into that a little bit more later. But the Fly More bundle we've got here, this will run you about $449 Canadian. This will give you a controller, two extra batteries, and some extra goodies in the box. There's another box. In the other box, we've got battery charging hub, nice and tiny. All right, so two batteries in here already, and they're kind of like phone batteries. The battery connectors are kind of exposed. That could be a durability problem down the road, but that's something to think about. So your battery goes in like that. There's a status on the side here. Fortunately, it comes with a USB-C to lightning connector for an iPhone. It comes with a C to C cable. It comes with a screwdriver to replace the propellers. What else? All right, we've got Yet another RC controller. Why would I buy the Flymore combo that comes with a controller that pretty much everyone already has? It's cheaper to buy the Flymore combo than to piece together the drone and the batteries and the charging hub and all the other stuff. So the controller is basically free. Now, if you don't have an RC N3, which is the latest version, this is the only controller of the RC series that is compatible with this. It runs newer firmware, newer radios. Basically, it's the same as the RC N2 that came with the Air and Mavic 3 and everything else. Uh, you still plug a cable into your phone, hook up your phone, and then you've got a, a traditional drone style controller. What else is in the box? Stickers, safety manual. We've got a accessory user guide. We've got EASA regulatory compliance for Europe, so this is a class C0 drone. It's kind of similar to Canada's sub 250 gram drone regulations. Safety guidelines and a quick start guide. You only have two spare propellers. Here's the actual drone hand drone. 135 grams, so half the weight of a mini, mini four pro with the battery. Specs wise, what is this little guy? 7.3 volts, so it's 2S, two, two cells in series. 1435 milliamp hours, 10.5 watt hours. Drone itself, what has it got? Power button on the back, this new mode uh, action button on the front. I haven't uh, gone through any of the training or manuals yet, but think about what this is kind of replacing, right? So the last drone that DJI had that was the smallest drone was the DJI Tello. So the Tello, this thing weighs 110 grams, I think it is. And this is like the OG. It's not really even a DJI drone. That's the Tello. That's the Neo. And here's the Avada 2 for size comparison. Obviously completely different. This is a professional camera. This is a multi-thousand dollar rig. This now has full upper and lower prop guards, right? So these let you hold the drone safely, comfortably. You can only take the top half off anyway. So really it's more just like for replacing props. So yeah, that comes off so you can replace your propellers. There are little screws, tiny little screws inside there. Around the table, that's the unboxing. Let's get this thing powered up. Let's get some juice into it so we can get it activated. Because this thing's under 250 grams, we don't need to register it with Transport Canada and we do not need to have a pilot certificate. So you can get into the air with this thing pretty much right away. Couple things though, of course, any drone in Canada, regardless of the size, there's the CARS 900.06 rule, which is the don't be an idiot rule. And basically what it means is you don't fly near people or near airports or near airplanes or helicopters that could cause a hazard to people or aviation. So you're gonna have to do a little bit of research about the area that you wanna fly your drone. Some municipal parks will allow it with a permit, some, well, most will not. Let's get this thing in the air and let's see what it sounds like. So really tiny propellers. It's a little bit shrill. It's smooth. It's definitely dampened, right? To be an, uh, an indoor drone. 
like immediately it kind of gives you a little bit of confidence that it's not going to be too aggressive. We really don't have much room to test it out inside here, but like this is me just hammering the controls, so it's it's pretty stable. But this is in sport mode, so I'm moving the sticks pretty aggressively, and it's still got a bit of dampening on it so that it's not like going to go into your TV or something like that. I think the battery is in the force landing. Yeah, it is. So the battery went into force. It talks. What happens is when you're in force landing, the drone will just start descending and you can still maneuver it. So as soon as I felt it starting to force its way down, time to get it back on the ground. All right, so let's power this thing back up. It's got 75 or more. And let's see if I can fly this thing manual. All right, it's in normal mode. There's a bit of video lag, like the frame rate is a bit stuttery. Like the camera's not bad. I don't know if that's latency or what. I'm gonna try putting it in manual, but I don't know how well. This is gonna be a crash test, guaranteed. There, it's in manual. Oh, it's really twitchy. <laughs> it's really twitchy and laggy. I don't want a manual indoors. <laughs> All right, I think that's probably the extent of we can fly it around in manual in here. It flies fine in like a normal mode. I'm fine with that. And obviously other than being noisy and obnoxious, right? So now it's holding because it's got contrast underneath it. I bring my hand underneath. Oh, so I put my hand underneath it auto landed because it saw a hand. So let's talk about features. One of the headlining things about this drone is its AI capabilities. These buttons on the top here, so this guy, they're preset modes which allow you to use quick shots. So it's got follow, droney, circle, a bunch of other stuff. So basically we'll work through that. But they're quick shots that are pre-programmed shots where the drone will automatically take off from your palm and capture a shot based on what mode that you've chosen. It also has AI subject tracking, so it can send the drone up and it'll track wherever you go. We've also got support for return to home, so if the drone goes far away and loses signal, it will come back to where it was. It has a GPS built into it. It has full propeller guards, like we've talked about, so they're gonna guard against any kind of fingers getting into the drone. And this is something that's really important because safety around people is its number one priority. This drone is meant to be flown indoors and around people, so it's nice to know that if something were to happen, this drone isn't gonna cause any major damage or cause life-threatening injuries. As always, it's worth noting that the drone doesn't feature any obstacle avoidance. On the camera side of things, the drone supports 4K video at up to 30 frames per second. It has a half-inch sensor at f2.8 fixed aperture, meaning that you're gonna get a pretty good low light performance, but you're not gonna have any control over the camera or how big or how small the iris is behind that lens. You will notice also there is no SD card slot, and that's because the drone has 22 gigs of internal storage only. So if you're gonna go out and shoot for a long time, you are gonna have to make sure that you offload the footage from this, which can be done over Wi-Fi or directly through USB-C connected to your phone or to your computer. In terms of stabilization, this drone has a one axis mechanical gimbal, so that means it only handles the up and down, and it does support both rock steady and horizon balancing, which could be turned off if you want to throw it into a third-party software like Gyroflow. DJI claims an 18-minute flight time, but we all know that's in an ideal conditions, so no wind, really simple. In the real world, we're going to estimate about 10 to 12 minutes, but we'll go more into depth in the full review. One thing to point out, though, is when you're flying in manual, your battery life is going to suffer dramatically. So why is this drone so important? The big thing with me is this is a super small drone that weighs just 135 grams of a battery, meaning it's classified as a micro drone. Micro drones do not need to be registered with Transport Canada and have way more flexibility when it comes to the regulations. However, with any aircraft, you cannot fly in a way that endangers aviation or any people that are near the drone. One of the interesting things about this drone is that it has multiple methods of controlling it. For starters, you don't even have to bring a controller with you. You can just use the buttons on it. So you can just press one of the buttons on the top and the drone will take off and follow you. You can also control it through the DJI Fly app and this will provide you with a bit more of the traditional experience. You can use your phone and just move the sticks on the screen virtually like you have a little bit of a, a software controller instead of the real thing. If you want the most control you're going to want to either buy the Flymore Combo which comes with the new RCN3 which is an updated version of the basic controller and then that will let you fly the drone as if it were a Mavic or a Mini or any other traditional GPS style drone. You can pair this also, like we've talked about quite a bit here, to your DJI FPV controller and your DJI FPV goggles so you get full immersive flight capability 
using the latest DJI uh, FPV system. Who is this drone for and should you take a look into it? We're gonna have a full review coming out, but for starters, this drone is marketed basically towards everyone or content creators and people who are completely new to drones. It's got tons of flight options for easy flying. It fits in the palm of your hand and it isn't as intimidating as something like a Mavic or a Nevada or something that's gonna require a pilot certificate to fly. The built-in prop guards are gonna ease your nerves when you're learning to fly and they'll really allow new pilots to dip their toes in and see what the world of drones is all about. You're not gonna be getting the quality of the footage that you would get out of something like a Nevada 2 or a Mavic 3 or even a Mini 4 Pro, but the reality is this is a $250 drone. So this is an entry level product. This thing is great for vlogging. It has the ability to pair with Bluetooth microphones and you can actually send audio to the video that's being stored in this. So you don't need to do it in post or editing using compatible Bluetooth microphones. Or you can use your phone as a microphone and send the audio from your phone back to the drone video at the same time as well. So this has been the DJI Neo unboxing. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.